what's up guys, it's Graphic Phoenix back with another video today, and today I'm giving you the answers to your questions that you left on the video that I post on Friday. All I'm doing is just using my iPad and I'm just going to scroll through all of the comments and hopefully get to every one. If there's repeats, I'll just refer to it as, look at the last time I answered that question. I don't know exactly how much you can see and how much detail, but Stella's chilling right behind me. And I don't think you can see Kai up there, but he is up there. This is probably going to be a really long video. I'm not sure if I'm going to break it up into two parts or just keep it as one. We'll decide that when it comes out. So the answers to your questions are just going to be completely off the top of my head. I might look for a second on my iPad just to, like, if it's a research question, something like that. But they're going to be off the top of my head. They might not be 100% accurate, but they're to the best of my knowledge. So... Keep that in mind. With no further ado, let us start answering some questions. So the first question comes from Exoblade05. Have you ever thought about getting a bearded dragon? We stumbled on this question for the first question. Yes, I did when I first got Striker, but now, nope. And I know there's many questions. Will you ever get a bearded dragon? Probably not. Um, the only way I could see myself getting a beardy is if it literally showed up in my door with tank and cage and everything, just like a rescue or something like that. Other than that, no, I really don't see myself getting a bearded dragon. Next question comes from Luke Roberts. How much is your electricity bill with all those plugs and cage lights? Uh, it's higher than most people's. I currently live with my parents, so... I'm not gonna lie, they pay for it. I honestly don't know how expensive it is, so. By the way, if I butcher your names, I'm really, really sorry. Next one comes from Bradley Marills. My cam isn't eating after a week, but he's running around fine and looks perfectly healthy. I'm unsure what to do. Do you have any advice at all? I get this question quite a lot. Honestly, it's impossible to answer without knowing everything that you have like and especially if it's a brand new chameleon they're not gonna eat if you get a chameleon that eats on the first day that's fantastic you did something right but if not that's not saying that you did something wrong or anything like that it's just that chameleon's scared it might not want to eat um and he said after a week which is typically the period of kind of settling in but you really don't want to stress the chameleon. If you have to, you can put like a towel around its cage. You have to make sure your temperatures are on point, your humidity is on point. You have a good setup. You don't want one of the cages that has a couple logs at the very bottom. But it's a 36 inch tank and there's one plant hanging from the side. You can't, you can't expect it to do very well in a setup that's not appropriate for it. So I'm not saying that your setup's bad. I'm just saying... Make sure everything's in check. Make sure you're feeding a variety of different animals. Try a superworm. Try a mealworm if it's a baby. Try something new. Like, don't just stick to crickets or, I guess, dubias. But try a wide variety of food and hopefully it will eat. And depending on what store you got it from as well, most chameleons from pet stores... Now, not all pet stores. I'm talking like Petco, um, Petland if you're in Canada... Places like that typically have very terrible quality chameleons just because they have no idea what they're doing. Most of the people there don't know what they're doing. And I know there's people like me and like Cody and I'm sure some of you might work at pet stores as well and you know what you're doing. But the vast majority of people out there have no clue and it's like, oh, it's another lizard I'm going to put it in a cage. They don't know. So it could be just the quality of the animal you purchased. Next question comes from Bry Bro. Can a leopard gecko live in a 20 gallon tank? Absolutely. The next question comes from Mayo de Gunsman. Are you going to get a new addition to the reptile room? Um, reptiles, probably not. Um, I, of course, would love to. The only thing I could see myself and my parents being okay with is a female super translucent veiled chameleon so we can have some shagging going on. Other than that, um, I will be getting a biopod. If you have no idea what those are, Google them. They're a Kickstarter. I had them in one of my videos and they're doing amazing. So I will be getting one of those. 
around Christmas, like in December it says they ship. I haven't really decided exactly what I'm going to get for that tank yet. It will probably either be dart frogs or a pair or trio of Amazon milk frogs. Next question comes from Sachin Athesen. Do you keep snakes? If you haven't seen any of my other videos, not at the moment. When I move out and I have my own place, I'll probably get some snakes. That won't be for another like three or four years though. Actually like four years at least. <laughs> Because I'm in university, and moving away from university is a wonderful thing, but is also very hard on your wallet. Something I noticed that a lot of people aren't commenting, I asked to comment whether I should live stream on Periscope or not. Clearly nobody got that, even though it was before the announcement of the Q&A. Actually, no, it was after, so maybe people just stopped watching the video. I probably will be doing some Periscope streams. Uh, the reason why I mention this is because Five Star Reptiles, Periscope. Next question comes from Turtle Gerbil 67 Question and answer. One. Out of all your reptiles, which is your favorite? I think I saw this comment a couple times. I hate to pick favorites. They're all so different. Like, Striker is the OG. He is my very first reptile. He's like 10 or 11 years old now. Biased to just say him, but also like Bowser and Stella, the monitors. Rango's amazing. Kai's awesome. The tortoise. Sheldon, I just love. If I really had to pick a favorite, like if I'm like held at gunpoint and like, hey, pick your favorite. I probably have to say Sheldon. Next question comes from Richard Lutz. Do you think about getting a Pac-Man frog? Please do. They're very cool. I have, and my buddy has three of them, and you will see his collection eventually. I will be doing a couple Pac-Man frog videos as well as like a room tour of his room. I probably will never get a Pac-Man frog. I just feel like if I'm gonna have frogs, the only frogs that I really consider, that I know of, like I'm sure there's some that I don't even know of that are absolutely amazing, would probably be the Milky's tree frog or the Milk's tree frogs. Next one comes from Ota Zork. What would be your favorite animal you have now? I just answered that, so there you go. Probably Sheldon. Uh, the next question comes from Fresh Beast Gaming. How do you convince your parents to let you get a pet beardy if they have a phobia of lizards? Good luck. The only reason why I don't have snakes is because my parents are the exact same way. I originally started liking reptiles with snakes. But my parents shut that down hard no. I just haven't gotten any yet, so... Honestly, that was... 11 or 12 years ago and I still haven't broke them. Beardies are tough just because a lot of people, especially people that are afraid of lizards, see how big they get and it kind of scares them. Like if you talk to them about like a leopard gecko or a crested gecko, like they're so cute and they might be more inclined to let you get one of those. If not, just do as much research as you possibly can and show them. Write it down in a book. I have like three books of research on Striker, my leopard gecko. I studied him for like a year and a half or two years before I actually got one. Um, we went to a class at our local zoo on like tips for keeping beginner reptiles. So that's what you got to do. You just got to ease them into it and prove to them that you're ready. Like if you're 11 years old and you're like have to depend on them, then it's going to be a little bit harder of a sales pitch just because they might not think you're going to be able to do much or whatever. You just have to prove to them that's not true. That's really the only tips I have for it. Next question comes from Squirrel Gaming. Here's my question. My Horsefield tortoise, which if you guys don't know, that is a Russian tortoise, uh, is not eating that much and isn't very active. What should I do? Again, it's tough to say not knowing the situation. Russian tortoises, I believe, can hibernate. And if the temperatures aren't warm enough, then they probably will, and that might be why. If it's a baby, um, just make sure that the basking temperatures are on point, and you're actually feeding food that it'll like, like not iceberg lettuce and stuff like that. Grab, grab some dandelions out of the backyard, or like find some variety on that. Don't just go into it throwing in some iceberg lettuce and expecting him to eat it. Make sure if it's a baby that you're giving a daily baths. Um, if it's a baby, make sure that its humidity is a little bit higher in the tank. It's tough to say without knowing the situation. Next question comes from don't subscribe. Q&A, how are you so awesome? I, I'm really not. I'm just an average kid. I guess I'm not really a kid. I'm 19, but still, that's young. I, I'll take that as a compliment, but I really don't know how. Ah, my buddy Matthias. Not even going to try to pronounce your last name. Uh, here's my question. 
Are we friends? Smiley face. How many reptiles do you have total? Greetings, your buddy Matthias. Or Matthias. Probably Matthias. Uh, I consider us friends. I mean, I'd be down to chill with you if you're over in Canada. Or if I was ever in Germany, I think is where you're from. I don't remember. Or the Netherlands. I don't know. I'm not, I can't remember where you're from. But <laughs> that's... I'd be down. And yeah, I'd call you a friend. As for total reptiles, I have... Including frogs, I have 12. Um, without frogs, eight. Next question is from Hendrik Willems. Can a crested gecko drink from an automatic mister? Yes. They won't drink, like, from the nozzle itself, probably, but they drink uh, off the leaves and glass in the tank. Next question is from Griffin Lee. Uh, what snake would you get if you could? What Dendrobates tinctorius morph is your favorite? Honestly, I don't really know that many Dendrobates morphs. Honestly, there's just too many morphs to know. Like, I, I don't really know any of them. I believe the powder blue is one, and that's one that I like a lot. As for the snake question, there's so many cool ones. It probably wouldn't be a ball python. It probably wouldn't be a corn snake. I don't know. I guess a rat snake and a corn snake are very similar. It might be a rat snake, like one of the um, sort of Vietnamese blue beauty. I don't remember if that's it or not, but... That's one that is absolutely gorgeous. A blacktail Kribo. I, I wouldn't be able to afford it, but if I could, I'd get a the black-headed pythons from uh, Australia. Those things are, oh my lord. Those things are sick. That's probably one of my dream snakes is one of those. Next question comes from John Cadman. Mike, I've watched your videos. I don't know if this is actually a question or not, but I'm just going to read it anyway. Mike, I've watched your videos for almost a year and for almost a year and they're awesome. You have persuaded me to get more reptiles. When I started I had one beauty and now I have one veiled chameleon which you recommended I get in the comments of a video. Also uh, I have a blue tongue skink. I just got him a month ago. That's pretty awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying the reptile hobby. Um, if you haven't noticed I have both of those so that's pretty sweet. And the same same guy asks what's your favorite kind of reptilian? Probably tortoises. I, for those of you that know Camp Cannon. If not, check him out on YouTube. He's a really, really good guy. Uh, I've personally never really talked to him, but just from his videos, you can you can get a sense for a guy, you know? If I had a setup like his, where he has, like, a backyard times, like, 20 for all of his tortoises, I would so hands down do that. I love tortoises. Honestly, Sheldon is, like, my buddy. Uh, I probably have that and monitors. Um... Like monitor, the tree monitors are really sweet, really hard to get and really hard to keep alive, especially if you're getting them from outside of Canada. Uh, he asked another question as well. Uh, why don't you make herping videos if you like reptiles so much? Uh, and have you ever had any reptiles die on you or sell them? Um, herping videos, I'm in Canada, so like 10 months of the year. Okay, that's, that's an exaggeration. Like 8 months of the year, nothing's out. Like it's... Most of the, this year hasn't been as bad, but most of the time we're like two feet deep in snow, and that's not an exaggeration for those of you that think Canada's like that. During the winter, we're definitely like that, or Western Canada at least. And honestly, I don't go herping. That's I just don't. A long ways away, and the stuff that I'd find if I did find anything uh, would be like bull snakes, rattlesnakes, tiger salamanders, and have I ever had reptiles die on me or sell them? I think if you talk to anyone that has reptiles and is not just like one leopard gecko or one bearded dragon, like if you talk to somebody that's big into the hobby and has 10 animals or 5 animals or 300 animals, chances are they've had some die. I've had that, um... I've had, actually had quite a few, not like old age related and um, stuff out of my control. Like uh, if you go back to my old, old, old videos, like three or four years ago, I had a leopard gecko. A, I think he was a raptor or an aptor. I'm not sure. Leopard gecko. And he ended up passing away while I was in Phoenix. My buddy was actually looking after him and our AC wasn't turned on and it got to like 130 degrees in my room. And, um, Stryker lived, and a bunch of my other stuff lived. Unfortunately, Kazzy didn't, so that really sucks. Uh, I had a pygmy chameleon named Kona that uh, was still in the videos. If you want to go see her, you can. 
she passed away of just old age. She was like two years old when she passed away, which is two to three years, I believe, is the average lifespan for that of the for the chameleons, pygmy chameleons. So she passed away, as well as Kula. I get that question every now and then, like, oh, where's Kula? She passed away like a year and a half ago, maybe even two years now. I don't know whether she was egg bound or what happened, but I ended up donating her to the university that I go to and my buddy that's doing a research project. I ended up donating her body to him. So she went to a good cause um, and she produced a lot of babies for me. So that was, that was really cool. And have I sold them? Yes. I had 24 babies. And I sold all of them. Next question comes from Christopher Ocha. Is a mountain horn dragon, a mountain horn lizard, a beginner reptile? Not really, but do your research and it will be fine. It's like a, it's like a chameleon. Like they're not animals that you want to go into the pet store and you shouldn't do this for even like leopard geckos or bearded dragons, but go into a pet store and have the guy there tell you everything you need to know about it. Cause chances are he's wrong and chances are you aren't really prepared for it yet. So do a whole bunch of your own research and then go talk to somebody like that. Yeah, so do a bunch of your own research and you'll be fine. Next question comes from Boss Bro. Would you ever think to get a large monitor? I would, but they are illegal here in Alberta. If you guys haven't seen her on, she's been on like Brian's channel on um, Animal Bites TV, Snake Bites TV. I believe her name's like Megan or Megan, I think it's Megan Kelly. Um, she got a big croc monitor that's like a puppy dog like that would be so awesome uh i would love that and i would totally do it but a lot of the big monitors are just illegal here so if i move to the states someday or something like that then absolutely i would look into getting a like a big monitor next question comes from lauren m my crusty just shed two days ago and he still has leftover skin on the pads of some toes the skin isn't around his entire toe just left on the pads I've tried humidity hide, bath, I still can't get it off. Do I wait till it falls off? What do you suggest? Just make sure humidity levels are high. You can try a bath and then try getting like a, a pair of tweezers or whatever and just kind of picking at it. You don't need to pull it at all. If not, just leave it and make sure the tank's humid for him. Next question comes from Killi Killian Cop. Will you ever be getting another day gecko ever? Probably not, but maybe. Um, like, I don't want to shut anything out. If, if I have the area, like, if I have the time and space to get some, I actually miss Moose and Bean. If you guys haven't seen them, I strongly recommend going and checking my channel for Ligodactylus Williams Eye or Blue Dwarf Gecko. I believe even, like, my February of 2014 or 2013 Reptile Room Tours, they're in this room with me. I ended up selling them to some random dude up in Edmonton, and now that some random dude is actually my buddy. Uh, he's breeding them, and they are, like, producing like mad. I was one of the most successful breeders here in, like, Western Canada. I had something like 11 babies, something like that, maybe 12. He has, like, 30 or 40. Like, he blew me out of the water. Um, he says moose and bean are the most prolific. Um, the m moose is kind of the macho man of the, the harem. So I still talk to them and I still hear about them every now and then. So I know they're doing awesome. Next question comes from Villager Bait Plays. My leopard gecko's toe is bleeding. A very tiny part of the tip is falling off. Will it heal? Also, what should I do for keeping infections out? If you guys haven't seen Stryker um, recently, he, well, ever, he has all of his toes, most of them, like, popped off because of when I was young, I wasn't aware of it, and the skin, actually, when they're shedding, gets constricted around their toes, and if you don't take it off or don't bathe him or anything like that, it constricts and just cuts off blood flow and <laughs> pops off, and you really can't do anything about it. The bleeding will stop fairly soon um, as for infections I never did anything special if you're really worried about it just take whatever substrate that he's on out and put down like paper towel or newspaper uh, put some polysporin on his toe and you'll be fine he'll heal up don't worry next question comes from games rush how much did your blue tongue skin cage cost this is just a 75 gallon tank I did actually buy another wood one that was 60 bucks from my buddy the 75 gallon I think I got for free from my other buddy, so yeah. <laughs> I can't really tell you. It's 75 gallon tank, so however that much costs that you're 
local reptile store. Sorry, I'm kind of squirmy, guys. I'm sitting on a five-gallon pail. Uh, next question comes from Riza Kavusi. What are some safe crested gecko plants? Um, there's a lot of safe plants. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. A quick Google search will answer this question very quick for you. Um, like snake plant works, pothos is fine. Probably many different species of like philodendron will be fine. Next question is from Ben Rawson Jones. Will you get Sheldon a friend? Yes, I totally would. Like if I'm lucky enough to stumble upon a female that is about his size, I am down. I would definitely get another friend for Sheldon. Uh, next question comes from Low Boys HD. Does your electricity bill come in high? I already answered that at the beginning. Kale Slapper has the next question. I'm going to start growing peppers. When should I start and what do I need? So I'm thinking of making a planting video, um, like how to grow indoor plants. And I'll probably make that and I'll answer the question there, but super quick for germination you just need really high humidity and high heat um, so just going on Amazon or whatever and ordering one of those heat pads will do you perfect uh, you also just need 6700 Kelvin light you don't need it just a bright light you can start it whenever you want just recognize I don't know where you live in the world so for me starting a pepper plant or really any plants at this time of the year like it would give me a huge head start on the year on the growing season next summer but it's also it's a long ways away so it's up to you if you want to grow them indoors by all means and then when it gets warm like if you're in Florida you might only have two months that of like not really nice awesome weather so it's up to you Adam Goldman asks how do you know your dart frogs are eating if the bugs eat the poo and you can't see them eating? They're still alive, they're definitely eating something. Next question is from Michael or Mikhail Geckos. Here's my question. Hi Mike, where are you from? I want to know how and when your passion started for reptiles. My passion started when I was a young, young, young child. Probably like seven it hit me, somewhere around there. Uh, the main factor for that was Steve Irwin. Honestly, he... He's my idol. I was just inspired by his passion and love. And while people say that he might have been kind of reckless around them, like, that's what I've heard from some people, like, oh, they thought he was really reckless. But when they actually met him and, like, interacted with him, of course he had a lot of energy, but he knew what he was doing. He was a great man. He did a lot for the world. He did a lot for the reptile hobby. It really sucks that he's gone, but that's where it started. Uh, Q&A, do you CO2 in your aquarium? No. Next question fr comes from Active Gamer. Uh, out of all your animals slash reptiles, which is your favorite? I've already answered this question. Next question comes from Crits Necromancer. Uh, what is a good companies to buy a monitor lizard from? Uh, there's a couple in the States that are really good. I know, I think he's called Rare Earth, something like that. Uh, he's a really good one. Uh, honestly, I'd just buy from him or like a local reptile shop might get them in every now and then. But if you're looking for a breeder, if you're in Canada, Canadian Cold Blood is really, really good. Uh, that's who I got Stella from. She's actually still lying down. Her head's not poking up anymore, but she's still there. Michael's Reptiles asks, can I get a bearded dragon? I already answered that. No. Next question is from Tina Rosario. How long have you been on YouTube and why did you start? I believe I hit five years on August maybe or September. I think it was August, like August 20th or August 16th or something like that. It was my five years mark. Honestly, it was because Brian Barcheck and I would research on YouTube. So a lot of stuff that I couldn't find, I was like, hey, well, maybe I can do that instead. Like it probably won't be like cinematic and amazing, but I'll get some good information out there. And that's really why I started. Like I just wanted to help people. Uh, and document my growth. I think when I started, I had Kazzy and Stryker. I think that's it. I, I don't remember for sure. Bros asks, uh, what is your most aggressive reptile? Yes, on live streaming, and it doesn't matter what you do it on. Most aggressive would probably be Stella. Um, like, I don't consider her, like, aggressive, because I can stick my hand in there and she'll be fine. Every now and then, if she does try and do something, it's just kind of like a half ass like... I'll have my hand in there waiting for Bowser to come up and she'll kind of sit there and just open her mouth really slowly, really non-menacingly. Like, I can pick her up if I really need to. None of them are really aggressive. Jonathan Van Kamen asks, uh, What do you enjoy the most about the hobby? Feeding, setting up cages, petting your tame animals, looking at your animals, etc. Honestly, probably my favorite part is setting up the live vivariums that I've been doing. Like, I've 
really gotten into that over the last month or two. Um, I've got a full tank of plants. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a whole tank of there of different bromeliads and stuff. That's probably my favorite part, but every now and then I'll catch myself just lying in bed and and thinking like, I have things from all over the world. Like, Sky from Indonesia, these guys from Australia, the monitors from Yemen, the frogs from the Amazon, um, Striker from the Middle East area, um, Tig from New Caledonia, we have Sheldon from the Mediterranean. Like, I have parts of the world in my room, and that is amazing to me. And of course, all aspects are amazing about it, whether they're, like, they're tame, they're all very friendly, I can take them out whenever I want. So next question comes from Lizards101. I think the live stream idea is really good. What do you find most interesting about your reptiles and amphibians? Just that, like, they're fascinating. So much diversity, so much like intelligence level. Like, a lot of people wouldn't believe it. Honestly, I think monitors are one of the most intelligent lizards out there. They're just so smart. Like, they know when it's feeding time, they know who you are. I can have Bowser out, and my mom will walk in the room, and he'll kind of shy back and be a little more cautious. And he just knows. Like, they're very intelligent animals. I'll walk over to Sheldon's pen and just be like, buddy, and he'll perk his head up and strunt on over to me. And it's just awesome. How do you tame a leopard gecko? And I basically said plenty of time. Um, that's all. Oh, that's the truth with all reptiles. It's all about the time. If you expect to get a reptile and it just be puppy dog tame like that, some of them are. As babies, most of them won't be. But most of them, when they grow up, will be fine. Other reptiles, like chameleons and monitors, stuff like that, all take more time to tame. Like, if you don't spend the time with them, they're not going to be tamed. That's bottom. Rooster Stanley Studios. Can you keep a baby crusty in a 20-gallon? You can. That is very large, though. Uh, I'd recommend, like, a 10-gallon, and then moving them up to an 18 by 18 by 20. Aquatic Reptile 14 asks, what size viv do I need for a blue tongue skink? My theory is bigger the better. That's kind of true with any animal. Um, I know, like, Brian Barcheck and Critter Cam and um, Critter Cam Camera Guy <laughs> all keep blue tongues in just tubs, like in, like, a, a snake rack almost. And that's fine, I think those are like 36 by 18 and that's kind of what I recommend like I I'd say 40 gallon breeder at very least uh, and mine's at a 75 so next one comes from Ben Battle out of all your reptiles which is your favorite I have answered this like four times next one comes from Cooper Scut what is the next reptile you plan on getting uh, I kind of answered this, honestly, the next one. If I was planning, it would probably be another female Aki for the, tr well, to complete the trio, or a female Veiled Chameleon. Aiden Whitlikoff, how long did it take for your Crested Gecko to get full grown? Uh, I have two three-month-olds, and they're still really small, and I love your videos. Well, thank you for liking the videos, and mine took, like, a year and a half, I think year, year and a half, somewhere around there. Rachel Eldred asks, my female veiled chameleon is about a year and a half, oh, a year and a half to two years old. She is kind of getting fat and we aren't really sure if she's just eating too much or if she's ready to lay eggs. We have a lay bin in her enclosure, but she doesn't seem interested in it at all. What are some signs that she would be ready to lay? Also, uh, just so I can distinguish her from being fat or actually carrying eggs. Thank you, Rachel. Just make sure that it's actually an appropriate lay bin. Like, it, they like really deep lay bin. The one that Kula had was like at least 12 inches deep, uh, and it was full. Um, as for, you you should be able to see like eggs almost in her body. Like, you can see the egg shape and how she gets like unevenly chunky and weird. A lot of times they'll start refusing food a couple days before they lay. Uh, or they'll just be sitting in their lay bin for days on end. And it could take them like three to five days, if not more, to lay. Because they'll dig, not like where they dug. They'll come back up, fill that in, re-dig, not like that. Emmanuel Joseph asks, uh, what do you need to take care of a tortoise? I'm not going to answer that question because that's a whole other video that I'll be filming eventually. So if you're really, really worried about it, Google it. 
Check as many different sites as you possibly can. Next one comes from Paul Jones. Have you ever considered getting a bearded dragon? If so, then what changed your mind? Nope, nothing's changed my mind. Next one comes from Weston Benin. Benin? What should you do with your crested gecko's water and bedding? I don't know what you're asking. <laughs> you should put it in the cage and leave it in there and change it when it gets dirty. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what is the best way to set up a corn snake cage? I mean, the things you should put in. Bedding, accessories. Honestly, man, I don't really have time to go over that. Just Google search. Corn snakes are very common, and they'll set you up. And he still asks, what is the best bedding for a crusty gecko? I use plantation soil. Some people use paper towel. Some people use moss. It's totally up to you. I recommend plantation. All right, my buddy Michael. I still don't know how to pronounce your name, but Richo, Rico, I don't know. Uh, he's a loyal subscriber of mine, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, Mike, my question is, what are your future plans in life? Like jobs, houses, and stuff like that. I'm 19. Well, I have ideas of what I'd like to do. Honestly, life can change so quickly. You could be planning to save up and... Or you could be saved up and plan to move to Australia or something like that. And some something will happen. You could get ill. Anything. Life is so random that I know basic patterns that I want to do. Like, I'd love to be a zoologist. That's kind of what I'm in school for. Um, or something in the biological sciences. Uh, I could see myself eventually, like, opening a reptile shop. Being, like, a biologist. Uh, a microbiologist. Or a zoologist. Or... Uh, something like that. As for houses, I would love to have my own house. Bigger the better. But it's it's just what I... I'd love to have a more detailed answer for you, but honestly, that's that's how I think. <laughs> Next one. Oh, my captain. Have you ever had issues with your monitors and aggression? I've thought about getting an Aki, but I really like animals I can hold and be involved with, so I've generally avoided monitors as most species can have aggression issues. I'm not about getting bit, even if it's from some small animal. Uh, that's probably not focusing, but I have a scar from my leopard gecko. And I have a few scratches from, like, nails, but they've never bitten me ever. Um, it's all about how much time you spend with them. Some of them do have anger issues, but most Ackies in general are pretty, pretty good. Um, there's a few that are obviously outliers, but most of them are fine temperament wise. Uh, Mayo de Gunsman, he asked a question earlier, has your leopard gecko ever had its tail ever had a tail regeneration? Nope. Robert Basia asks, are you going to sell any reptiles? Not if I don't have to. Josh the Great asks, what are what's a good starter tortoise? Um, there's plenty of them. If you want more like arid climate like mine is um, either Herman's tortoise, elongated tortoise, Russian tortoise, Greek tortoise. There's a whole bunch of really good ones. If you want something a bit bigger, you could do like a leopard tortoise. Or if you're really wanting to go balls deep, you could do like a sulcata tortoise. But really make sure you research. Those guys get massive. Um, obviously not like a Galapagos or anything like that. But they still get like 100... 150 pounds. Now that's a guess. I don't know that for sure, but they get really, really big. So unless you have a backyard to dedicate to it and very nice weather all of the time, I don't recommend getting a sulcata. Um, as for like more humid loving, um, cherry heads, red foots, yellow foots. Um, if you want something a bit bigger, I believe it gets bigger than them. The Burmese mountain tortoises are really cool. There's a bunch of stuff up there, so research those. The end of part one, if you made it this far into the video, leave the comment fruit fly in the comment section down below. That just lets me know that you've made it through this. I don't know, I've, I think I filmed like 120 minutes, so a long, long time. If you made it this far, drop the word fruit fly. While you're down there, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, any thing you want to ask me, obviously I'm doing a Q&A right now, but I will type you an answer. Um, as well as leave a like rating on this video if you did like it. And subscribe to my channel for more reptile, amphibian, and shrimp tanks in the future.